Greetings to all our listeners and our host on the radio. This is Pastor Itani Madima from Kingdom Restoration Church, Toyando. Today I want us to talk about the abuse that is happening in the church. The angry people who are not ready to welcome the prodigal son back home. The holier-than-thou self-righteous people who are hard on other children of God. And they make church a very unpleasant place to be. Usually at the crusade we have hundreds of people who give their lives to Christ. Maybe out of the thousands that got born again, only a hundred comes to church. And out of the hundred, only about twenty or thirty becomes dedicated Christians. What happens to the rest? Is it the devil who's pulling them back to the world? In most cases, you'll find the repelling forces are right inside the church. The mean, angry other brother, the jealous, angry sister, is the one who makes life hard for other children of God. This is what I want us to discuss today. Let us read from Luke 15, verse 11. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger man said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the young son got together all he had, set off to a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and he hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to the fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. This young man was really in a bad situation. It is bad enough to be broke, but this young man was not just broke. He had already passed that stage of just being broke. He was starving. He had nothing to eat. Many people experience being broke in their lifetime, but not so many get to this point. This young man in the story could have been a Jew. Jews are not even allowed to eat pigs, but this young man was desiring the food of the pigs. I don't know how serious your situation is, but I want you to take encouragement from this young man's experience. Things can really get bad in this world. There are different seasons and there is a time for everything. Whether it is just a different season happening to you or it is a situation that you brought upon yourself because of some bad decisions you made in your life, whether it is your fault or it is just a season, I want you to take courage from this young man's experience. Please keep listening to the end of this parable and you'll be encouraged. Verse 17, when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. You see, when he decided to go back to his father, he was not even hoping to be accepted back by his father. He knew he messed up big time. All he wanted was to be treated like one of his father's servants. This is when he realized that his father is a good man when he remembered even the treatment that his father's workers are getting, which is far better than what he was going through. Maybe you never knew how good God was when you were in God's hands. And now that you have handed yourself to the devil, you know that your father God was a good father. It's not too late. Make the right decision. Verse 18, he says, I will set out to go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So this young man never knew the loving heart of his father. He thought there was no second chance. He was just going to be one of his servants. That's all he wanted. Even if he can no longer be his son anymore, all he knew was his father was a better boss than the bosses he was working for. Verse 20. So he got up and he went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and he was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. This young man was treated better than he deserved. From what he did... 
for demanding his inheritance while his father was still alive, he didn't even deserve to get a job from his father. If his father was a mean man, if his father was not full of love, if his father was not full of compassion, this young man was not even going to get a job from his father because he didn't deserve it. But his loving father, his compassionate father, treated this man better than he deserved. Yes, that's what most of us need. We need grace. We need love, unconditional love. We need to be treated better than we deserve. Most of the people who are preaching the gospel of works and law want you to be treated like you deserve. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be treated like I deserve. I want to be treated better than I deserve. So if you want to go back to your father God, take courage. He is a loving father. He treats people better than they deserve. Verse 21, the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Look at this. Before this young man finished the speech that he has rehearsed before he came, his father interrupted him. Verse 22, but the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Verse 23, bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Here is one of the reasons why many people don't even want to go anywhere close to God. They are not focusing on the love of God. They are not focusing on the forgiving God. They are thinking of what they have done. Their focus is on how great their sin is. But instead of focusing on what you have done, think of what the Father has done for you. Think on what Jesus has done on your behalf on Calvary. Now, here's the sad part of the story. Verse 25. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard the music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come back, he replied. And your father has killed the fetid calf, because he has him back safe and sound. Verse 28, the older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. This is what is also happening in the churches today. It is the angry other brother who is spoiling all the fun for all the prodigal sons that are trying to come home. You see, the biggest threat of the repentant sinner is not God. God is not judgmental. God is ready to forgive and welcome us home. The biggest threat is the angry other brother. That's the gate crusher. That's the one who spoils the party. Verse 29. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. You see, that's the main problem. He says, all these years I've been slaving for you meaning I've been working hard for you. Those church members whose emphasis is on their works are a real problem. Everything is about what they deserve because of what they have done, because of their hard works for the Lord. These are the people who feel jealous when sinners come home. They don't get it. All they are thinking about is the hard work they have done. Some of these people are those who started this journey at a young age like me. They repented early in their lives, and most of their lives they've been in church. So they don't understand this grace thing. They don't understand why someone they went to school with, who had nothing to do with God and he had all the fun, while they were already repentant and they were laboring in God's field for all those years, maybe for the last 15, 20, 30 years, this person finally comes home. After all the tolerance they had for him, all of a sudden he comes home and is going to have all the privileges they are having in the kingdom. There are people like that. They don't get it. In most cases, 
It is the elder other brother, the angry brother, who doesn't want to welcome the backslider back to church. Yes, there are many backsliders who want to come back to church. They've been working for the other boss and they realize their father was more than fair. Some are saying, I just want to come back to church and not receive my position back. I don't even deserve to be an usher. I don't deserve to be in the choir. I know I don't deserve to be in the leadership. I just want to be a church member. I just want to be home. If possible, I can just be cleaning the floors of the church. But when the father sees their repentance, they are willing to treat them better than they deserve. The father wants to give them their former position. The father wants to reinstate them. My brother, my sister, I want you to know, whether anybody likes it or not, I want you to know, God wants to treat you better than you deserve. God is not going to treat you according to what you have done, but according to what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. Prodigal son, I want you to have boldness to go back to church. Have boldness to go back to the Father. It says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. You are in need right now, but the Bible promises you will find help in times of need. Are you in need right now? Forget what you deserve or not deserve. Come boldly into the throne of grace so that you may obtain mercy. We all need mercy. We all need grace. Even those people who are very difficult in church, who want everybody to get what they deserve, they act like that until they themselves are in trouble. That's when they need mercy. Yes, they can criticize grace all their lives until they are in trouble and they are in need. Then they start crying for mercy. Have you realized that the people who hate the gospel of grace find it hard to find help in times of need. They can't find boldness to come back to the throne of grace. Verse 30, But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes come home, you kill the fetid calf for him. Verse 31, My son, the father said, You are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we have to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. You see what I'm talking about. The elder brother is worried. He's worried about the luxury his younger brother had, which he never had. How many times do people in church envy the people who were in sin? It's like they're saying, I could have done that, but I didn't. I denied myself of all the pleasures. And this one who has gone to squander everything he had comes back and there is a party. Dear pastor, you think it is the devil who's spoiling your church. No, it is your other son who's spoiling the church. Your other sons and daughters, they are hard on other children of God. Pastor, you're working hard to build the church, but the angry other brother is destroying what you're building. You're working day and night to gather the sheep, but the angry other brother is dispersing the sheep. These holier-than-thou brothers and sisters are the reason why the sheep is getting scattered. There is abuse in the church. Some people are suffering in the hands of the elder angry other brother or angry other sister. Some people have left church not because they are angry with God but because of the treatment they are getting from the angry other brother or other sister. Is there room for backsliders in the church today? Is there room for the prodigal son in the church today? Pastor, your church band is suffering today because you have reinstated the prodigal son back to his position of playing drums in the church. Your ushering department is suffering. Because you have decided to forgive a backslider and you have given them back their position as an usher. Your church is suffering today because a good-looking lady just got born again 
and many sisters are threatened in the church. They are saying she enjoyed the pleasure of sin all her life. We've been in church laboring and working for God. And here she comes into seducing our men to marry her. That's the problem. Do you wonder why at the crusade 500 people got born again? You only managed to bring 100 back to the church. And out of the 100, only 20 are dedicated members. Where are the rest, pastor? Where are the rest? There is an angry, older, other sister in the church. She will not give space to these repented sinners. Some of the backsliders could have long come back to church. They are not afraid of God. They are afraid of the elder other brother, the angry other sister. There is abuse in the church. Let us allow God to treat people better than they deserve in the church. Let us allow God to receive a murderer back to church. Let us welcome a thief back to Christ. Let us celebrate the coming home of a prodigal son. This is Pastor Itani Madima, Kingdom Restoration Church in Maru de Toyando. Have a wonderful week and continue to be fishers of men. Bring them home. Until we meet again, stay blessed.